What's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to the channel, you guys. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are having a marvelous, marvelous into your weekend. You guys already know what we're here for. We've already dropped a power video. If you guys have not checked out by um, season five, episode two, um, a review for power, please go ahead and check that out. Remember to thumbs up that video as well as share it. Don't forget to comment down below. Um, also, we are here to do the Real Housewives of Potomac. If you're new to my channel, I do Real Housewives of Potomac. I do Greenleaf, Queen Sugar. Um, I try to stick to shows that have a little bit more substance. I really don't do a lot of love and hip hop and that type of thing. Um, just because I'm, I'm kind of emotional. <laughs> And I be taking stuff for real, for real. And it just be fake and contrived. So, you know, I could deal with Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, they're a pretty good group of girls. That and Married to Medicine, one of my two favorite shows on Bravo. This episode of season three, uh, episode 14, is called Cans We All Just Get Along. And basically, this is the start of a really great trip that... Chris has um, gifted to Monique to take her and a group of her friends um, on a really, really great trip for her birthday. And she chooses Cannes uh, south of France. So um, basically the show just opens up with them talking, you know, catching up the people who are here at home, talking a little bit with each other. What the show was really about was one, the flight from the time they got to the airport to go on this trip uh like i said all the ladies you know they gather there they get out of their cars they stand there they gather they so they can all go in together they can all get checked in together and they can all get on the flight together of course robin is falling behind um this is one of a couple of times i think that she is going to fall behind on this trip she is not feeling well she has a bit of a scratchy throat but at the same time um robin you know for her to hold other people's feet to the fire about um and be a stickler about certain things with other people you would think time would be one of those things being a business owner and a mom you would think time being one of the would be one of those things but anyway she's late coming and uh, when Giselle gets there she packs her shade at, on the carry-on she got her shade in the carry-on she hugs kisses and speaks to everybody but Karen just shady just shady and I said last week I thought that they really are friends and this is what they're doing to um, keep the show relevant and promote a storyline, but um, Giselle was on Karen's ass this whole episode. It's, it's like she wants her to break down. It's like she wants her to, um, I don't know. She's just such a, a bully. I mean, she really kind of low-key in confessional and out. She's mean. She's very biting. And I'm a person that's observant, and I tend to make jokes about that. But Giselle is mean. Giselle is biting. She Any little bitty thing, she puts it on the loudspeaker. She puts a magnifying glass over it, and she beams a giant light on top of it. Like, there's no way to have... Uh, any secrets or be discreet around her because she looks for the opportunity to belittle um, and put minimize and put other people down it just never fails um, they get on the plane Monique upgrades her and Sharice to first class it is her birthday and she you know it's a little bit more private up there her and uh, Sharice have made up they want to talk privately together and Giselle who didn't even want to come on the trip. She said she'd come, but she only going to hang and talk to Robin. You got a problem with the fact that the girl went up on first class. Like, that don't make any sense. You always got, you just got to have something negative to say. Like, you feel like that's your place. And I'm telling you, 
me personally, it 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 makes me look at your your makeup line, your business, like. It just makes me look at you weird. Like women who can't get along with other women and then they try to come out with videos and makeup lines and empowering. It's just, uh, I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it from her. Um, let's see. First of all, hands down, this, this episode for episode 14, Monique is best dressed. That little blue dress she had on when they, after they got to their room and, um, um, well, you know, got freshened up. She put a little blue dress on. That was super cute. That all white with gold embellishment she wore for the flight. Super cute. That hair that she has in her head is beautiful. I would love to have that hair. Like, that is some beautiful, beautiful hair that she has in her head. And it looks like it's a really good quality. Um, Monique has gone uh, out. She has gotten a helicopter ride instead of taking a 45-minute car ride, which... I like car rides because I like to look at the countryside, but they took up a, a seven minute helicopter flight, which was also exciting and wonderful. Um, Giselle had something to say about that. They get to the hotel and she's got the penthouse supreme suite Monique does, but then she's got like a smaller suite off to the side. First of all, there's nothing small about the word suite. So it's still nice, I'm sure. And she has one ticket, she's, you know, key, and she says, it's between, since you guys really didn't want to come, I thought I would offer you guys a piece offering and offer one of you guys a room, but I let one of y'all decide which one gets the room. Now, we know it's going to be Giselle, because Giselle is the alpha dog in Rahul and Robin's friendship. But they, you know, him and Hall and put around at it until Giselle's like, thank you, got it. But first, they made Monique pay for the gesture. They made her pay for the Jesse by standing there and making her listen to them go back and forth and be shady and act stupid. Um, let's see what else. Again, you know, Monique said it out beautifully. She, like I said, she had the helicopter ride. She had flowers. She had gifts. It just nice little thoughtful gestures, handwritten uh, cards with the gifts. They had fully stocked refrigerators in their room. They all had their own room. Didn't have to share a room with anybody. It was just. It was just wonderful. It was a wonderful, wonderful um, thing that she did. When they all standing outside, like I said, she had on a beautiful little blue dress. To me, um, Sharice is dressing a little regular, regular, right? Like, them jeans and them half shirt. I was just like, girl, why is... <sighs> I'm sure they was probably $700 jeans, but they look like Walmart. All put together, like, she, she really just just was not just was not her most polished best um on this trip at all but um again we see that ashley uh prior to the trip and after the trip she's having conversations with others with her mom and with herself in the confessional with us about michael evidently he claimed he couldn't hear most of the song and he had just gotten off a flight if you guys have ever been on a long flight uh, or back-to-back -back flights, you know it, your ears will be stopped up for a good while before. And you'll be done got used to it before you realize it. they pop and you're like, oh, everything is so much clearer now. So, I mean, he could have been. I still think, I still think she's not feeling love and affection for Michael. I still think Michael has discovered something. I still think something has gotten in his ear to lead him to believe that she is not as sincere and she is not, at, her and her mom are not as sincere. I still just get this feeling that they are working overtime to really convince this man that they all good with him. And secretly, I don't know. I don't know. Anybody who spends a lot of time digging up dirt on other people got a lot of dirt. Okay, just like a thief hold a purse tighter than anybody else, People who gossip, people who like to uncover your secrets and, and reveal your secrets and dissect and expose every little bitty thing that you do, nine times out of ten, they got some secrets of their own. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they want to expose you as being um, no good or low down. Some, a lot of times they, they low down, especially when they get a bee in their bonnet about it. And she got a bee in her bonnet about Karen. 
every chance she gets, she want to try to expose Karen. I was like, Karen, you need to do a little light digging on, on Miss Ashley because I think, me think she does protest too much. Now, I'm not saying Karen is innocent. I'm just saying you are severely, severely preoccupied with Karen and her business. Like, it's a matter of life and death that you expose her. And I just think, mm, I don't know. I don't know. We need to see if she got a little grifting in her past, okay? Um, let's see, what else? So, um, you know, like I said, as she talked about Michael's lackluster attitude. Um, so, the ladies take pictures of, uh, Monique gives the ladies their itinerary. The next day, they're going to go to this um, place where they make oils. Um, this is one of the things that she do for not, for lazy moms. Uh, is that she uses a lot of natural remedies to keep her children healthy instead of a lot of immunizations. And I'm 110% on board with that. And she gave a good example about an oil that she puts on the back of her son's neck and on his forehead and how it cleared up his sinus infection. Y'all know if y'all seen my um, favorite things video from our first annual YouTube Spirit Week. Um, I love liquid colloidal silver. It kills anything uh, that has, if, even if it's the start of an infection, a sore throat, you gargle with it, you put a little up your sinus passages. I mean, I'm with it. I'm for it. And of course, Giselle's got something shady to say. Now, Robin isn't full on, full on, um, you know, her normal dry mean spirit itself because she's not feeling too well but it's okay because um ashley and sharif gonna pick up the slack later on so she tells them about that and she tells them about going to a perfumery uh perfumeria um and supposedly uh karen is excited about it because she wants to have a perfume line now giselle continues to bring this perfume line why isn't karen more excited about the perfume line and the per going to the perfume place especially since she got a perfume line and once she gets that little bee in her bonnet she just will not let it go now never mind the fact that you didn't speak to the girl when you she first walked up so now that they all go inside and they're having dinner and they're sitting and they're talking um giselle says so karen how is your perfume line coming what stage is it at and you know that she's asking so that she can get some information that she can pick apart, um, cherry pick, pick at, pick with, and pick on. You know that. And I'm sure Karen knows it too. It was just the way she came across seemed like Giselle put her on the spot. She was nervous like she didn't really have an answer. Like maybe she put this perfume thing on autopilot. And, or, you know, she's one of those people that they play, you know how them kids are, they play violin this semester, they play drums next semester, they play soccer this semester after that, like, it take them a while to settle on what it is they really, really want to do. And, um, Karen is kind of like that, like, she's trying to sort of attach herself to a lot of different things, hoping one thing or the other will stick. Um, and Giselle is constantly calling her out on that. So when Karen gets defensive and she asks Giselle what level is her, Giselle's like, it's a business. And she was like, oh, okay, well, what about your partners? You know, you got your partners. You talk about, talk about you know, it, was, it wasn't, the whole partner comment wasn't really, to me, didn't come across that big of a deal, but okay. <clears throat> so Ashley jumps on the bandwagon immediately. And she's just like, what about Matt? Where is Matt? Um... And, you know, Karen's like, well, I guess he's back. You know, he's fine. And she was like, I'm just saying, you need to watch who's in your circle. And she gets up and go get something to eat. And so, of course, Monique is like, what you told my girl? Let us know. Let us all in on it. Um, Sharice gets up and she goes to stand next to Ashley. And they are sitting there in the crowd, you know, at the buffet, um, kind of going over some things that they heard mutually about Karen. Like, Karen's not even there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah y'all better be glad this is a tv show this would have went completely like they would have put us out the hotel they would have pulled us out the hotel now, i began <sighs> okay so anyway um you know ashley got she got she got she got big balls so finally she just tells 
you know, she tells us in the confessional that Matt was at a gay bar. I don't know why that was important, um, that Matt was at a gay bar. Um, whatever, he was at a bar, and um, he was drinking a little bit too much and got to talk, and she's saying she had a very, 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 very credible source. Okay. All right. We all want to believe that we have very, very credible sources. Any human will lie, and any human will carry a lie. Okay, any dog that'll bring a bone or take a bone. Everybody knows that. That's number one. And number two, uh, where's your credible source on Michael? Where's your credible source on your my, on, on your husband's penis? He jet set in his last minute trips. He don't really want to be bothered with you too tough. It don't seem like so much so he don't even want to be bothered with your family, your mother. You got bigger fish to fry, girl. You got bigger fish to fry. And so they get on... Karen, he's saying that you don't live in, let me see what he say. Like I said, when they get in the group setting, they find a victim. Karen was the first victim. Um, Ashley asked about Matt, you know, and they saying she not staying in the house in Great Falls. Instead, she supposedly living and raised um, Bachelor Pad, Old Bachelor Pad, which is a townhouse. And, um, Sharice kind of chimes in on it in the confessional. She's the one that's telling us this raised townhouse and this is what they heard and so on and so forth. Um, this is all stuff you would call Karen about and just talk to her about it. It's not necessarily something you would bring up in the group, especially if it's a rumor, like you really shouldn't be propagating that, but it's for the show, right? And Karen just tells them that her son is living there. He's saving up money for his own house. The need to explain... You need to get away, get get away from that, Karen, because you're terrible at it. Like you are the worst at explaining yourself. Even if it's not a lie, it always sounds like a lie, girl. Just I just wouldn't explain. I'd be like, mind your own damn business. Don't worry about where I live. If them ninjas want to get outside your house and sit in the bushes if they want to hire a private investigator let them go through all the expense and all the trouble whatever they discover they just discover it but be sure that you got all of your ducks in a row when you when you set out to uncover somebody else's mess make sure your 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 own situation is a sweep around hey your own front door before you try to sweep around mine that's all I have to say. It's just another way that Sharice looks bad. She just looks bad all together. She always looks bad. She She's a real hater. She's a real, real hater. I'm not saying Karen is not lying. I'm not saying Karen is innocent. I'm just saying Sharice is a real hater. And it don't take much for a hater to bring up some bull crap and keep it going. And Ashley ain't no better. Anyway... Um, I don't like that. I don't like ganging up on people. And, and you know, Ashley was like, you're, you're just not credible, Karen. You just, don't nobody owe you the truth. Don't nobody owe you the truth. Don't nobody owe you a lie. The girl don't have to say a mumbling, Mickey freaky word to you, actually. Actually, and she was very, very graceful to sit there next to you and not mollywop you with that, with that wine glass. Because me, I would stood up on your ass. I'd have stood up on your ass because what you're not finna do is have me explaining to you like you my school teacher, like you the vice principal or something. Like I, I've been called to the pastor's office. That's not going to happen, Ashley. That's not going to happen ever, ever, ever. And it pisses me off. It really does. It pisses me off because I wanted her to stone cold cuss your ass out. And then you're going to try to call her a bitch because she bring up Michael. Okay, so you dishing, but you ain't taking all right, the girl never did call you a bitch after all this stuff you were saying about her. And then she say something about Michael, which is something you probably should be focused on, and you're going to call her a bitch. Goodbye. Goodbye. Um, like I said, Sharice joined in in the confessional. Then Mo Monique gets it next. Why did you, did you say, I was like, you trying to be separate. Why would you move? And they asked me if I wanted to have first class, and I did not take first class. And then you going to move it. You didn't even want to go on the trip. You didn't even want to talk to the girl if you did go on a trip. You said you was only going to deal with Robin. Now, all of a sudden, you offended about her moving to first class. And they put her in a position where now she's telling the story about her and Chris. She was talking to Sharice about the fact that her and Chris had a major argument before they left. And it's all surrounding the fact that he does not feel like he's getting enough attention from her. Like, she is so divided and he's not getting enough, big enough piece of the pie. 
Well, of course, um, Sharice tried to explain it on Monique's behalf and all of that. Monique at first was like, I, I wanted to move. I, I paid for it. Nobody else paid for it. It's not that big of a deal. We all adults, yada, yada, yada. And, of course, Giselle makes it more and more and more and more into more than what it is. Ashley is deadly silent at this point. It's weird, right? So she tells and she talks to him about the whole. And, of course, it's an instant reason for them all to bond because Robin's got a ex-player, now coach, husband, um, or boyfriend, or live-in, whatever. Life partner, I don't know. <laughs> Baby daddy. Um, Giselle, you know, coming from the Jamal Bryant, you know, where he's this big, powerful man. And, you know, uh, always wanting her undivided attention. And everybody's undivided attention because they get whatever they want. They can ask for whatever they want, you know, so on and so forth. And it's a moment. Well, Giselle asked her some pointed questions. And she says, around my birthday, we always argue. And she said, well, do you think that's because, Giselle said, well, do you think that's because the attention is on you? And Monique is like, well, I don't know. I never really thought about it that way. They all just started to talk and bond and it's a great moment, right? It's not going to last. It's not going to last because this is what Giselle does. She goes from person to person to seeing who, she, who who can take as much meanness as she could possibly dish out without breaking. <laughs> Once you break, she moves on to someone else, right? So Candace decides to do a slight little grandstand and talk about, you know, because, you know, being on the news and in the magazine and the thrifty nickel as well as... Being Miss Thrifty Saver, you know, for the month of May. And, um, yeah, and Chris and Princess and everybody just started laughing. Like, her trying to have this super deep, deep moment about the fact that Chris called her a princess when she is so clearly a princess. <laughs> she was talking to him on the phone. Like, she is so entitled. In the confessional, though, when she's talking about the other ladies, she comes across very intelligently. Well, of course, she feels disrespected, even by Monique, because she feels like you laughing it up with Giselle about me, and Giselle was just acting an ass on you a few minutes ago, right? I get that, too. But what you was getting ready to talk about, Candace, was was a non-Mickey Freaky factor, basically. Like, you could have saved it, girl. You ain't got to try to get attention with that bull crap. Okay, so... Um... Let's see. Now, let's talk about the blow-up. So, the ladies the next morning are waiting in the lobby. They're going to go to the oils factory, the perfumery, and, of course, do some light shopping. Um, Giselle, you know, immediately finds somebody she wants to shade. It's the fact that Karen's got on tennis shoes. Um, anytime you go out on on excursions in, in, in cities and towns and islands, it's a lot of walking. And I'm going to tell you the best way to end up with sore legs and sore feet and sore knees is to wear flip-flops um, or even pumps it's better to wear a smaller heel um, and be more comfortable now she chose to wear tennis shoes it it wouldn't have been an issue for me but but Giselle had to find a reason to say something and she know Karen not feeling her but she also doesn't feel a sense of threat from Karen so Karen's gonna always be an easy target um, Robin is taking her time because really her and Giselle don't want to go. The ladies decide they're going to wait on Robin even though Robin is severely, severely late. And Giselle talks them into going on because they now realize that Robin basically doesn't want to go. She wants them to leave so she them to go on and do the oil factor and the perfumery and then they're going to go on and do their own thing. This is what they said they were going to do in the beginning. So... I wouldn't have cared either way if they didn't go. But the bus is leaving at this time. This is what time we're leaving. Y'all can do whatever y'all want to do. Cherise stays back and she's just like, why are, we, why are you guys acting like this? I don't understand. And Karen looks like she's walking off, but she's actually making a loop around um, this structure and coming around the back of Giselle. And she walks up just in time to hear Giselle after she had said, I don't understand why the person who's supposed to be doing perfume doesn't want to go to the perfumery. She acts like she's not excited. And the woman says she never said she wasn't excited. It just wasn't what Giselle wanted. Plus, she wanted to get right back on that thing. And so this is an opportunity for her to get right back on it. And you know why she doesn't want to go? Because there is no perfume line. And 
uh, at that moment, Karen walks up on her. And so there's this conversation back and forth. And she said, I think you met brought up that thing about my partner. As a matter of fact, my partner, um, who is Erica Lyles, she has a problem with my partner because my partner um, basically um, was stalked by Ray at a party. Ray, Karen's husband at a party. And Karen knows about it and she is upset about it. You're just mad because Ray wants Karen Lyles instead of you. I was like, Giselle, what you want the woman to do to throw herself in traffic? I think she wants Karen to break that. I think that's her goal is to get Karen to break down so that she can have some sense of victory over Karen. It, it's just, I, I just, I don't, I don't care for Giselle. I just flat out don't care for her. Even when she was having that moment with Monique and Monique was like, that's first lady Giselle. And I really like first lady. I'd rather deal with first lady Giselle. She still had a piety about her. She still has a haughtiness about her that makes me spit her out. She, she, she's not, she is not edible. She's not digestible at all for me. Like, I'm spitting her out. I wouldn't buy her makeup. I wouldn't buy her makeup because I don't like her ways. And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. That's me. Um, anyway, it, it was just another dagger. It's another way to really try to hurt Karen. I take it back. Maybe they're not all, maybe they're not really friends. Clearly, Sharice is not all in with everybody. Um, anybody can get it from Sharice. And I just don't know. For Giselle to be so mean spirited to Karen, even if Karen is 100 and totally, 10% totally in the wrong, the fact that Karen is not um, fighting back. The fact that Karen is not necessarily a, a great sparring partner verbally just makes you seem that much more the bully, Giselle. And that's just what I think. Y'all tell me what you think. Put it down below. This has been Real Housewives of Potomac, uh, Season 3, Episode 14, Cans. We all just get along. Until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah.